Sarah is my granddaughter and is taking us to the Pacific Rim. Enjoy everyone and let's go, Sarah. You're on. Right. Thank you, thank you. I did wanna say thank you to the foundation, Bonnie, Kathleen. I'm thrilled to be here with you all today. Thank you for joining me. And I know a lot of you are on the East Coast, so it's about five o'clock, our little past. So we'll start with a drink. Um, to go with our theme, we're making a Mai Tai tonight. Uh, super simple, just a few quick ingredients. You're gonna wanna start with rum. There are specific rum types for the original Mai Tai recipe. I don't have that specific rum. I'm sure it tastes great with it, but I will use a dark rum. Um, into a shaker, you're gonna take one ounce dark rum, pour it in. I have another Malibu, a little bit sweeter. Pour that in. And then there's an orange liqueur. You're gonna do a half an ounce for that. Pour that in. And then for a little bit of a sweetener, I have, um, I actually cut some pineapple yesterday. So I'm putting a little pineapple juice as well as a little simple syrup to give it a little sweetness. And then finally, you're gonna just top it off with some crushed ice. So I'm add that in, put the top on, shake it. Sounds good. And then you don't want to strain this. You want all, all the ice, everything inside. It's a little stuff. Okay. Pour that into your glass. And then to make it nice and fancy, you can add some more ice so it tops it off beautifully. Add your full half of your lime and a mint sprig. And a little trick to this is you're supposed to clap the mint in your hand. That releases the fragrance, the oils, and just kind of gives it a little extra mint boost. So sprig goes in and you're all set. So if you're drinking with me, cheers. Fantastic. Well, that's actually really good. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. And then next we're gonna to go to the scallion pancakes. So for the scallion pancakes, if you are cooking with me, um, you should have your dough already made. There we go. So the great thing about scallion pancakes is that it's a great little appetizer. You can dip it in almost anything. It's a nice, um, just kind of foundation for any sauce that has a little extra flavor than just a typical flat bread. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your dough already formed and to make this dough, um, you just take all purpose flour, water, knead it, and that's it. Let it sit for an hour and it should become super nice, super soft. So the recipe that um, you are given makes four pancakes. So you're gonna cut your dough into four pieces and you're gonna work with one piece at a time, letting your other pieces rest on the side, covering them with a cloth so they don't dry out. Then you're gonna take your dough and you're gonna slowly, and if it, if it does stick to the counter or your rolling pin, you're gonna spray a little bit of oil on it or rub a little bit of oil on the counter and the rolling pin. I wouldn't use any flour at this point. Um, oil should do just fine. And then you will shape your dough into a thin rectangle. I should point out too, when you're making your dough and kneading it, you knead it for about six, seven minutes because what you're doing is trying to form the gluten inside of it. And you can tell when the gluten's formed by taking a little piece of your dough spreading it between your fingers. And if you look through the light in it, you should see through and become a little translucent. That's how you know your dough has formed enough gluten so it can, so it, the structure can take all the scallions and all the goodies you put inside of it. So if you're cooking with me, we'll just roll out into a rectangle here. Um, like I said, what's great about this recipe is 
as long as you have the dough and can make the dough, you can put almost anything inside your scallion, scallion pancake. Um, when I was testing recipes, I noticed that I did not have any scallions. So instead, I took shallots, which have a similar flavor profile. Um, I diced those up and then I put them in a pan so they would get soft. Um, and then I added that to my scallion pancake. Um, I was also missing a little bit of the essence um, or the aesthetic of the green that the scallion or the scallions give. So I added a bit of cilantro, fresh cilantro inside. And I have to say, it was, it's definitely going to be in my rotation now for um, my scallion pancake. Then I'll make some shallot pancakes. So I'm stretching this out into a rough rect rectangle. It is okay if it rips, small holes will, will form just because you're stretching into such a thin um, rectangle. You should see your hand underneath. Um, that's how thin you want it. So looks like we're about there. Now to your flattened rectangle, you're gonna take one teaspoon of toasted sesame oil you can use regular sesame oil, or if you really don't have sesame oil, you can use regular oil. Um, sesame oil gives it a better flavor, but regular oil, what it's doing is creating layers and keep, and then when you fold over the dough, your layers, your dough will stay in layers. So when you cook it, um, it'll be nice and flaky. So I poured my oil over the dough and I'm gonna take a pastry brush or my hand works great too and just lightly brush the oil all around make sure I get make sure I'm getting all the oil to the edges as well and that looks great then I'm going to take a little bit of salt sprinkle it on top fantastic and then you come to your scallions um, I thinly sliced mine that way you don't get a huge bite of it but you're getting enough so you can see it and taste all of it. You're gonna, this, call, this recipe calls for four scallions. So you're gonna chop all those up and use about one fourth per dough ball. You can be fairly generous, again, making sure all the scallions get to the edges. And that's a, pretty much it. So to fold it, making sure you can see this, you're gonna take, the part of the dough that's away from you. And you're gonna fold it into the center. And again, it's okay if it rips. Oh, sticking a bit, take my bench scraper, very handy tool. And you're gonna fold it into the center. Then the side that's closest to you, you're gonna fold that again into the center. And then once you get a rough rope shape, you're gonna kind of keep folding it in on itself long, wide, long ways until you get a nice compact rope. So you can see I have my rope. Now another trick to form layers is to coil your rope. So you're gonna take one end and coil it in on, it, on itself, kind of like a, um, a snail shell. There you go. And then when you get to the end, you're gonna tuck it underneath so it all stays coiled. And then I'm only making one with you today, um, but I would recommend if you're making them all at one time, put this to the side, start on your next, rectangle, roll that out and make them all at one time. So we're going to roll this out and cook it. So I'm going to get my pan ready on medium heat, a nice drizzle of olive oil. You can always add more later too, but you want the oil to cover the bottom of the pan. Um, so what you're gonna do is take your rolling pin again. It shouldn't stick anymore because you added the oil inside. And you're gonna roll it into a, 
about a nine inch circle. That will fit nicely in your pan. If you roll it out a little bit too big, that's actually preferable just because it will contract a little as you pick it up and place it. And that's just the gluten in the dough doing what it's supposed to do. If your dough is very tough and hard to work with, just let it sit, rest on the side 10 to 15 minutes, come back to it and it should be super easy to roll out. Okay, that looks pretty good. You can see I have my circle here. Now another trick to this is to cut a little slit with something sharp, a knife, your bench cutter. You're gonna, you're gonna cut a slit in the middle of your pancake and you can make a slit kind of around the sides too, not too many. But what you're doing is when you place it on the pan, you're allowing all the steam to escape and that way you don't have any bubbles that are puffing up because you want your pancake to be flat on the pan so everything browns and you get a nice even brown and that will allow it to be crispy. So my pan is heated up. I have my circle scallion pancake. I'm gonna place it in the pan. And then I'm just gonna let that sit. You should hear a little, little sizzle. And so let that sit for, I would say about three to four minutes per side. Um, flip it over. You can definitely play around with it. Flip it over, check, make sure it's browning, make sure it's browning e um, evenly. If it's not browning evenly, move your pan around a little bit or take something and move your pancake around. So while that's cooking, I'm going to clean my station a little bit. Um, but like I said, these scallion pancakes are extremely easy to make. Um, you can make them for an appetizer, for a quick snack at lunch. I had Indian food the other day and dipped them in my curries. Um, that was fantastic. I made homemade hummus the other day. Um, it's a crowd pleaser as well you get a nice crisp flaky outside and chewy inside. Um, so that's why I love them. But again, if you have any comments or questions, put them in the chat below. Um, Kathleen will send them to me and I can see them here as well. I'll try to answer as many as I can. And if I don't answer your question, um, I'll try to get to it at the very end of our session. But I would also like to say, I do have a website. It's called Salt and Pepper. Um, you probably saw it on the invitation. And I do have the scallion pancake recipe there. Um, and you can reach me if you have any questions for me as well. So I, I originally got into food just through Instagram. Honestly, I didn't cook too much when I was younger, but I was always infatuated with the colors and the food and everything about it. So I started my own Instagram um, in high school and I mostly started it because I didn't want to bombard all my friends with food pictures all the time on my personal account. And slowly that grew and grew. Um, and now I have about 80,000 followers on there, which is fantastic because I get to meet people all around the world. Um, I'll post a question and I'll get so many different responses just because of the, just because people have uh, cooked things different ways or they have different go-to meals or different techniques. So I'm always learning and that's probably my favorite thing about Instagram. Just gonna check my pancake. Okay, it's slightly browning. I'm gonna leave it for a little bit longer. I did, I don't know if many of you are knowing what TikTok is, but I got into that recently. <laughs> oh, that's a whole, that's a whole other, other thing, but um, it's, it's been really fun. It's been interesting. Uh, if you are interested in 
growing your business or having a social media for a business, I would have to say that TikTok might have more potential to be seen and to grow in followers than even Instagram. And coming from me, I obviously have a lot of followers and that kind of thing, but it's hard to keep growing. You know, there's so much competition out there. So TikTok's a great, great new social media um, platform that it's been, it's been really fun to make videos. Excuse me, Sarah, may I mm -hmm. interject just something? Absolutely. Not that I want to brag, but Sarah has 82,000 followers on her Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not yeah. saying another word. <laughs> yeah, and, mm -hmm. and the 82,000 followers, I think it really came from me getting to the app early on, you know, using the typical strategies, the hashtags, the geolocations, um, tagging other people, liking other people's posts, but um, but it's been hard to grow lately. It's been great to continue to talk to my group that I have, but it's been hard to reach out to new people. And again, that's TikTok. That's actually what I really like about it um, is you're able to be seen even though you're a small account. Um, I mean, even in the past two days, I made a food video and that has been seen over a hundred thousand times. My biggest video was over 300,000 times and I've gotten to about 5,000 followers in just a few weeks, which is crazy. You know, I've started other Instagram accounts um, and tried for years to get that many followers. So it's been really interesting, but. Okay, we'll flip the pancake. I don't know if you can see this, but it's getting nice and brown. It's just what you need. You don't really have to worry about cooking inside of it because it will cook very quickly because it's so thin. But what you're really looking for is kind of the brownness all around. I'm gonna move it slightly and keep that there. Um, and last thing on TikTok, the pot sticker recipe, I won't make in front of you today. However, I did create a video on it and I posted on TikTok, it's my last video, so you can go and see that. Um, and that will give you a step-by-step -step video tutorial of how I made those pot stickers. That's great. That, that's also the, a pork recipe. Um, it's the same ingredients except I put pork instead of ground chicken. The recipe that you have today is a ground chicken recipe. So still fantastic, both recipes, just kind of a preference of what you, you want to make. Um, Sarah, how do we find you on TikTok? Oh, TikTok. My, my account is Taste and Traveler. Oh, I have to interject. OK. Yes. Uh, fortunately, Sarah was able to do a semester at sea where she went to many different countries, certainly on the Pacific Rim and others. Sarah, will you tell us mm -hmm. about that? Yeah, absolutely. I did a study abroad program. I believe it was about 12 different countries that I went to. Um, a lot of them, we started in Hawaii, then went to Japan, China, Vietnam which has really inspired me to get more into the cuisine. And that's kind of what represents this meal is the Pacific Rim. So today we'll be starting with the scallion pancakes. Um, that's more, I think, Chinese recipe. Uh, same with the pot stickers. Those are typical um, Chinese dumplings, but we'll move on to the miso salmon. That's Japanese. Um, inspired and then the spring rolls are Vietnam and I actually did a cooking class in Vietnam where I learned how to make spring rolls and I've picked up a few techniques that I think will be helpful um, hey, Sarah, so we'll get to that soon yes um, Gail Patizzi is asking any tips on the dumplings oh to make the dumplings yeah any tips that you offer um my one big tip for all recipes is just read the instructions through before you even start. Uh, I find that really helpful 
just with the measuring out because if you're making the dough by scratch you have to do a lot of math and kind of make it so they're the same size dumplings it's okay if it's not exact exactly the same um but there's and then i use a food processor you can use a knife to cut everything up or you can knead the dough by hand but the food processor definitely helps when you're moving a little bit quicker um, and then as far as folding it I have a little extra dough here so maybe I'll do while this scallion pancake cooks I will show you how I fold it so it's really simple really easy um, and just with a little bit of practice. So I have the dough here. I have my, let's just say filling. These are scallions. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold one side. Uh, if you do have pre-made pre dough, it might be hard to stick. So. Sometimes I recommend a little bit of water around the edge or egg. I've usually seen water. Um, so if it's not sticking, try that. You'll take one side of the dough and kind of touch it to the other side so it looks like a, almost a taco. And then I'm trying to do it so you can, so everyone can see. And you'll take one side of the dough and fold it in on each other like this. And the other side, you're gonna fold in like this, again, it's not the, the dough, and then you'll crimp the outside. So you'll kind of have an overlapping um, crosshatch there, and then make sure to crimp the sides and so no filling gets out. And then that's what a dumpling will look like. I think that's probably the trickiest, trickiest part is folding it to make sure you keep everything inside and get as much filling as you can inside of there. Um, I would also recommend to use a tablespoon as a measurement as well, because um, then you know how much filling you're putting in. So it looks like our scallion pancake is perfectly browned. And then if you have a wire rack, I would, recommend placing it on there and cooling it um, and cooling it on the rack on the rack it will, it will stay nice and crispy if you put it on a plate the steam on the bottom will just accumulate and make it soft and we worked so hard to get it crispy you don't want you don't want to ruin it so I don't know if you can see that, but there's your scallion pancake, nice and crispy. Um, there's a few ways you can eat this. One way is just to tear this apart, eat it, dip it, anything you want. Um, another way is to cut it up kind of like a pizza into little pie shapes. I have a piece here like that. Just a personal preference. So while that cools, so a sauce for the scallion pancake. Um, I did a really, really simple soy sauce with a little bit of scallions marinating in there um, to complement the flavors. So here's the sauce. And again, it's very simple to make. In a small bowl, you're gonna whisk together your scallions, soy sauce, a little rice vinegar, um, honey for sweetness. You can add a little sugar or agave too. Um, and a little bit of water, just so it's not as strong. And you'll dip that in. Okay. So I think we're good for the scallion pancakes. Again, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. Um, Kathleen. And the, yes? Gail has a question. Any tips on the dumplings? Yes. I just asked that question and we just answered. Oh, oh and yes. also mm -hmm. someone asked if you could repeat the sauce recipe. Oh, the sauce recipe, absolutely. It's scallions. I did about one scallion, uh, two tablespoons of soy sauce, 
a teaspoon of rice vinegar, a little drizzle of honey, about a teaspoon as well, um, and then a splash of water. And I do have that recipe along with a peanut dipping sauce recipe for the spring rolls. Both of those are on my website as well. So that's saltandpepper.xyz. Um, and then my recipe section, you'll find both of those. It'll say cooking class um, sauces and then peanut sauce and the so soy scallion dipping sauce. Okay. So the spring rolls. Um, I was in Vietnam when, and I've, I've heard of spring rolls a lot, fresh spring rolls, fried spring rolls, I love them all. Um, but in Vietnam, I really honed in my skill for making these because I've heard and I totally agree that the trickiest part to making the spring rolls is dealing with the wrapper. Um, it gets very uh, soft and fragile and it's just hard to work with. So a, a lot of people, yeah, I'll show you. My family bought this a long time ago and it's a thin disc container and you fill that up with water and you dip in your um, your rice paper which looks like this you dip that in and then you twist and turn until it's all covered in water and a lot of people will just keep twisting and turning and dipping it in the water till it's soft and you don't want that so I would recommend um, one method is to just dip it in twist, make sure it's all covered in water and take it out. It will be, have a little structure to it and that's exactly what you want. Because as you put it on your plate and fill it with all your goodies, you wrap it, it's gonna keep soaking in the water and it's gonna become soft and become basically the perfect texture. Um, another technique that I learned in Vietnam was to take a kitchen towel and then you're gonna make it damp Place it back on your plate and it's nice and wet. Take your rice paper and then slowly just press the rice paper into the, the, wet, the wet kitchen towel. You can flip it over again and you can feel the texture little by little getting nice and soft easy to work with but again not too soft that it's too fragile and you'll just when you wrap you'll stick your finger right through it because that's no fun still tastes great but if you want it to all stay together so i have my rice paper it's nice and wet it is bendable now but it's not too soft and for ingredients today we have um you can use any type of lettuce. I had cabbage. I have some cilantro. Jalapeno is optional. Um, I have carrots that I cut into ribbons like so, just using a vegetable slicer. And then I cut cucumber into little sticks. And I have mint. Um, and then the last ingredient is these vermicelli rice noodles. I've had them without it and it's a nice appetizer, but if you're looking to make the spring roll a meal, I would recommend doing the noodles and also adding in a protein. Um, I've done steak, I've done shrimp, that's fantastic. Um, but today we're gonna make a all veggie, all veggie roll. So just take your veggies, layer them like so, um, you want to put a good amount. You want to stuff this up because the the paper can take it. But you can build up to that too because sometimes it is hard to roll. I'm placing my cucumber now. Um, I have a little sprouts, placing that inside. Um, the jalapeno and then finally my carrots. And then I'll place my rice noodles as well. You do wanna be a little thoughtful when you're placing this so it all stays in one section of your rice paper that when you, when you roll it, it's just a lot easier. Um, 
But again, there's so many different things that you can put inside of these. Um, with the protein, you can also add some purple cabbage. It's nice and pretty in there. And then I will slowly roll this and then take the sides, fold it in on itself, take the other side, fold it in on itself, and then continue to, continuing wrapping it. And there's your spring roll. So as you can see, by the time I was ready to wrap it, it was nice and soft. It wasn't too wet. It wasn't too fragile. It held up. That's perfect. So you can take a knife, Cut that in half. And you could see all your goodies inside of there. And what's and you can I could probably eat about two or three of these definitely in one sitting, but it's great because you can add different things. You can even add some of the sauces. You can dip it in the scallion sauce. Um, that's delicious. I did make a peanut sauce, especially for the spring rolls. And the peanut sauce is, again, super simple in a, a medium bowl. Whisk together peanut butter, hoisin sauce, soy sauce, a little bit of sriracha if you like the spice. Um, and then you'll slowly add in water just to thin it out a little bit until you get a sauce, until your desired consistency. So I have some of mine right here. I'll take it with my spring roll and you're all set. Again, you can add it inside if, if, that would, if that's what you like. And then you can also add some on the top. I love sauce, so I can never get enough. Um, so in Vietnam, it was, very, it was very interesting. I did a cooking class and they taught us both of the different techniques of the rice paper. Um, and I thought it was a great little trick to make the spring roll enjoyably because I get frustrated if I can't wrap it or if I make a hole in it. Um, but those are two simple, simple methods that will help you get the perfect spring roll each time. So, Again, again, if you have any questions, I'm just checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, if you are making the pot stickers, that you can go buy the pre-made pot sticker dough, um, or you can make the dough. It is all-purpose flour and then boiling water. Um, you mix that together. You can even use a food processor. That's what I use. It makes it a lot more simple. Um, and then you also add the cabbage. Napa cabbage is preferable. It's a nice little more subtle flavor than a regular cabbage. Um, you'll chop that up in the food processor um, and that really gets really wet sometimes or you'll notice some water start to come out when you're cooking the Napa cabbage. So you'll see in the, the directions um, I wrote a little trick to that which is chop it up place it in a bowl, sprinkle some water, I mean, sprinkle some salt, and that salt will draw out the water. So in about 10 minutes, you'll end up with some cabbage and water at the bottom. I was surprised how much came out. Uh, you're gonna just discard the cabbage water and you're gonna use the actual cabbage that you chopped up inside the filling. Um, so you're gonna add that to your chicken, your soy sauce, sesame oil, um, a little bit of vegetable oil, rice wine vinegar. You can also use sherry vinegar or um, any type of vinegar you have. The hoisin sauce is also great. And then I used freshly grated ginger with a little salt and pepper. And again, another trick to the ginger is peeling it with a spoon. Um, I figured that, that out way too late and I was wasting a lot of my ginger. And instead I just used a spoon and easily peeled that off. Um, so you're gonna combine all those ingredients together in the food processor and take a tablespoon at a time, put them into your wrapper, fold them up. Um, and then if you were not gonna eat them all in one sitting, cause the recipe does make 40, I could probably eat them all in one sitting. But if you can't, then I would leave them on a tray like so 
put the parchment paper, line them up so they're not touching. And then if you have a big enough freezer, stick them in the freezer like that. Or you can divide it up between a few different trays if they don't all fit in one. Um, and then once you flash freeze them, I would say 30 minutes or so, uh, then you can put them all into one bag and then they won't stick together. And then you can cook them, bring them out whenever you like. Um, it's kind of, it's a, I would say it's um, impressive to have homemade pot stickers ready whenever you have company over or anything. So, and, and then I have, a quick question, I have a quick question from uh, yes. Mary Ann. Mm -hmm. She was surprised you didn't fry the spring rolls. Is this a different type of spring roll? There are two different types of spring rolls, fried and fresh. I've had both and I really enjoy both. Um, sometimes frying is a little bit of a, a lot. You have to get the oil out. Um, you have to mess with the temperatures. Um, and this is just a lot more fresh. The veggies will also stay fresh inside of this roll. So there are two different types. Um, and to fry them, you would just simply place in a large pan some oil, vegetable oil, bring it up to a, a temperature. And then when you place them in, they'll fry. Um, and you're just looking for a crisp outer texture of the rice wrapper. Um, but those are two types. I, again, made both of the types in Vietnam. Um, and that was a lot of fun. We, I did it on my semester at sea, uh, study abroad. And for the cooking class, they gave us a little money. Um, they made us go out into the market and get all the ingredients by ourselves. And I don't personally speak Vietnamese. So it was really fun to try to communicate with everybody, um, find the different ingredients we need, and then negotiate the prices. Um, and then after we brought them all back to our cooking space, and then we had a mini competition between our little teams that we created. Um, and one of the dishes was the spring roll. And I think we got first or second our team. So that was, it was just a lot of fun to do. Um, but, and then lastly, we'll move on to the miso salmon. And what you'll do is you'll, you'll, you need about six to 24 hours to marinate the salmon. Um, and you'll combine white miso paste or brown miso paste. I would say any miso paste works, but a white miso paste is uh, more preferable. Um, a little bit of sugar, some sake, some marin or rice vinegar, and then you'll whisk all of them together. It should be a pretty thick mixture um, and then you'll take your salmon. It should be about a half pound per salmon filet. Um, and then you'll dip that in, skin side down into the mixture, then flip it so you get the top side and then place it into a container. And then once you've done that with all the filets, you'll pour over the extra sauce and let that marinate for six to 24 hours. I usually do 24 hours, um, get it out of the way and have as much time as I can to develop the flavor. And then after it marinates the day of, you're gonna adjust your oven rack to about eight inches below the broiler. So it's nice and close, but it's not too close that it will burn right away. Um, you're gonna take your salmon, wipe off with your finger and not a paper towel. Don't rinse it. We work so hard to get the flavor. We don't want to rinse it right off. So with your finger, you're just going to wipe off the marinade. If you do have a little marinade on there, that's totally fine. It'll all be good. But the reason why we're wiping it off is because it'll burn, especially if it's too close to the broiler um, and you have a lot on there because of all the sugar that's inside of it. Um, so you'll place that You'll take a pan like so, and then you'll place a wire rack inside the pan if you have one, and then place foil on top of that, and then place your fillets lined up. Um, and then you'll place that in the oven for about eight to, eight to 12 minutes. Uh, the inside should register about 165 degrees. And another trick to this is, you usually have a thinner part of the salmon and that will usually get a lot more crisp and might get darker quicker. 
So you can take some of the foil and fold it over that part of the salmon so that it stops getting um, dark while the other salmon can finish cooking. Um, that's a little, and then I did want to show you, I put together a platter of all, of everything that you can make. I just want everyone to see. So here we have the scallion pancakes, the fresh spring rolls, the salmon served with a little bit of lemon, helps the acid, it helps bring out a little flavor. And then finally some pot stickers on the side. Um, I cut up a little bit of pineapple in the middle here. Um, I don't know if you've seen this little gadget before, but I have to say it works really well if you're trying to core out a pineapple. Um, you stick it right in, turn it, the core stays inside so you don't get the hard part and then you don't get any of the rind or have to cut that off. Um, it creates little discs like this, which are also super fun to eat. Um, I love that. And then finally, I added a mango here. And sometimes mangoes can be hard to cut and present. So this is my technique. I can show you quickly what I did. Um, usually mangoes have a pit that runs down the middle. Um, and so you have two ends that have a little bit more meat to it. So you're gonna wanna slice down the pit and then you'll come up with a half like this. And then you're gonna wanna score it which basically means cutting it, but not going through the skin on the bottom. And you're gonna make lines going down and then lines going across. And then once you have that, you're simply gonna take it and then push from the bottom out. And then you have little cubes of mango. Um, you can cut it off this way if you did want to eat it or take a spoon and just peel it right off. It comes off extremely easily. Just another presentation style. So that's everything I have. Um, and if you have any questions, like I said, down in the chat, please feel free to ask anything. Um, I'm also, I check all my direct messages on my TikTok, my Instagram for sure, and my website, there's a contact page. If you ever have any questions or you need a recommendation for a recipe, I have tried a lot of different things. Um, so happy to chat. And if, leaving you, I just wanna leave you with three things, which is have confidence when you cook. I think a lot of people are, are not adding enough flavor, not adding enough spices, just add it all in. Um, which is, brings me to number two, which just go with the flow. Everything will be okay. Um, I think a lot of people are like, I don't have that exact ingredient. And I hopefully showed you that even though you don't have all the ingredients for the pot stickers or the specific meats, you can switch it up very easily. Same with the spring rolls, the scallion pancakes. Um, and, and the last thing I would say is probably read the recipe. That's my biggest tip for anything. Read it through before you start cooking so no ingredient comes up and surprises you. Uh, you know that you need to add salt here or you're cooking something and you're like, oh, I, I forgot to chop up my onion. Um, and that can then get stressful and hectic and then that's no fun to cook. And I have to say, this also helps when cooking a little bit too. So cheers, thank you all for having me. Well, my goodness. I can't even begin to thank you enough for doing this for the foundation. Sarah, it was wonderful. And I've gotten so many text messages that have said these words. My mouth is watering. Good, I'm I glad. Just, <laughs> I just think it is absolutely wonderful. And I hope that everybody enjoyed this and um, you can stay on to network with your friends and it's just a joy to have you all at this event. Thank you yes. so much for coming.
Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for Sarah. having me. I'm unmuting everyone if you want to chat. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Good job. And I have to say, uh, Bob Shanley came on uh, a, a little bit later than when we started, but he has a background in this. So I bet he could get you some really good recipes as well, Sarah. Yes. And Sarah yes. could certainly get some great recipes for everyone. Yeah. I mean, yes. everybody here probably knows my stepfather's a Japanese chef, so, um, you know. How about that? Yeah, he, he makes a lot of the stuff from scratch, too, the pot stickers and the, um, and whatnot. So, yeah, it's pretty good. He's, he's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, wow, fantastic. Yeah, I'm always open to trying new recipes, new techniques, and I know little when it comes to the whole cooking experience in general. So um, please, again, direct message me or email me. Um, I'm happy to chat food anytime. I love it. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave this on, or Kathleen, I should say, is going to leave this on. And Sarah, you can stay with us or not if you choose. But on behalf of the foundation, I thank Thank you and love you to the moon and back. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So hi there, everybody. Are, are you staying on? No. No? Yes. Oh, my goodness. I should say yes. I am. And I hope you are. I see so many of you whose faces are not on here. And if I could come on, Woo, Beth, if I could come on, you all certainly could come on because I'm killing myself over my hair. Oh, it is absolutely. Uh, Richard? Yes, fine. It was so great to have you and look at us. I begged for a thousand dollars and certainly there we are. So tomorrow morning, I will mention that. And we are going to have another uh, Zoom foundation event. We are going to do a 5K run walk. Right. We have not decided yet on the date that we're going to have that, but that one I'm gonna put out to the world. That'll be a great money raiser for the foundation and exciting. Oh, I, Beth, I just saw your son. Hi. Hi, it's so nice to meet you and thank you for coming. Sure, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. And I am so happy that we can be planning. Oh my gosh, you're so pretty. Pardon? Carrie? No, it's my, I, I unmuted myself to just say, my sister said thank you, and then my granddaughter. Oh worked. my gosh, and Carrie, Hi, thank Carrie. you for bringing so many people. And oh, Tina, pleasure. likewise, thank you for bringing so many people. This is just absolutely the best it could be. Yes, Sarah was wonderful. Thank you yes, so she was. much. And oh, beautiful. Awesome. And beautiful. She's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, Inside and out. Horrible. Uh, we, we are all excited. You know uh, she takes after Bonnie. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly not her father. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, he's, I know he's listening. I know he's, he's listening. But David is my youngest son. And I am so thrilled to have his daughter doing this and to have offered. And by the way, she donated her services oh, yeah. to the foundation. I and that makes it just a even you, better. Very nice. Uh, yeah. And to all of you who are there, all the people I love, I see on my screen, thank you so much for this. And stay on. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> uh, how do you like being in shelter, everyone? No. Well, yeah. let's not talk about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Hey, Bonnie, where, where were you thinking? I, I was on the Bronx River Parkway this weekend. Um, they, they closed down the parkway for the weekend, so maybe you want to do it there. I believe they do it on Sundays. I'm not, yeah, I believe they do it on Sundays. That's not a bad place for us to meet up near White Plains and then um, and do the, the run walk. Yeah, it's they do bicycles. It's Sundays they do just bicycle through Sunday. June and then again in September. Okay, not, hold not on July everybody. and August. Hold on, everybody. I do believe, and I will let you know this, and some of you at the committee meeting uh, next Tuesday will, will go over this, but we are not planning where to have it. The way it will run, I do believe, and I'm almost positive, the way it will run will be everyone who signs on to do this will do this wherever they want to do this. Oh. And just let us know. They will have to purchase a time and date that they will run, I think, when we all discuss this. However, uh, it'll be wherever they want to do either a walk or a run. So we're doing a 5K and it's going to be fantastic. Also, there will be a, for every uh, person who signs on, they will get a, um, we've, a something. I'm not at liberty to say yet because we talked about a number of things. So next Tuesday, we'll make a decision on what the item will be that says HG, Hudson Gateway Realtor Foundation, on whatever it is that we do. So, so that Bonnie, will come to you after tonight. I'm sorry, I don't have that number is, yet. Is it but, gonna be like when they run or walk, whichever, they're going to get like sponsors that sponsor them for each mile they do? Is that how you're raising the money? We That's have correct. Discussed. We have As everyone no does. It's a personal challenge. And to Donald's point, they could get a group together, or they can run separately. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking if every if people wanted to do small groups, maybe even per county or something, that might be a fun way to do it, and could do it where there's enough social distancing and all of right. that stuff. I would think. I can tell you, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sponsor Gail because I'd go broke. <laughs> <laughs> that's for but, sure. but that would that's a great idea to bring up next week when we have our meeting that we certainly oh my gosh we could certainly have lots of sponsors sponsoring various teams but i'm glad you brought that up because we'll bring it up next week i think that uh, I'm so ecstatic, you know, Richard, you've seen me in this ball game before and Gail as well. For me to be so thrilled about how we did tonight, it's just, it makes it wonderful for us to go on and on and on. And um, I'm just so delighted that we could make this happen tonight. And Tomorrow, I can come to the meeting and say we have another thousand dollars to put into the coffers. And I'm very enriched by all of this because I live in Port Chester, as you know, and it's very difficult here. Uh, we, one of the grantees that we have here is Carita and their food kitchen closed down because the church did. And that really made it Bye, difficult. Sarah. Thank Bye, you, Sarah. I'm Thank you, everybody. Bye, Sarah. Thanks, Bye, Sarah. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much Thank for having so much, me. Sarah. Thank you. Everybody is saying the best, Sarah. Good. I've I'm gotten, really glad. I've gotten so many text messages. You have no idea. So <laughs> it's all good. But anyway. What we're doing with this is just an enormous help to all those who are suffering through this mess. I'm but so happy to help. So anytime. we will all we will all come out on the top yes. and do the best for those who need us, I'm sure. Absolutely. Bye, Sarah. And Bonnie, Bye. Bonnie Bye. you may have already mentioned Bye. this because I had to jump off real quickly. Okay. Uh, 
the decision that the board of directors made at their last meeting? Did you already mention that? No, I have not. Please do. And maybe Gail, you can chime in. So the directors, as you all know, typically we would be going to conferences and we would have gone to Washington DC for the uh, legislative meetings for NAR. And we actually got this uh, idea from NISAR. So the HGR directors authorized a contribution of $10,000 to the foundation for the foundation to decide on food banks and charities uh, to disperse that $10,000 to. Uh, and the trustees are gonna meet tomorrow to make that decision to how to uh, disperse that $10,000 in terms of the contribution that was made from the HDR directors to the foundation. Fantastic. Great. That's Isn't good. That great? That's so great. Incredible. And, uh, of course. And, and Richard, I heard, Richard, I heard you're going to match it with your own $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you've got a pot of gold that I'm not aware of, Don. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But in the meantime, we will also be, at, be able to add this thousand yeah. dollars to our, awesome. our event to uh, for next event. year. Yeah. Yes. That's great. All right, so so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go jump off since I um, now are, we finished cooking early. I have time to work out before I actually cook my dumplings because oh, the filling's all that. made. I'm gonna I'm going to work out too. <laughs> I'm going to I'm have a glass of wine while I'm you going to work out. <laughs> I'm going to celebrate my daughter's 21st birthday. Oh, nice. Aww. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. Thank Kathleen, you for Kathleen and Bonnie, let us know when we're getting together for, to discuss the, uh, a week, the race. A week from yesterday, a week from Tuesday, last week from Tuesday. Tuesday. I'll send out a notice. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Bonnie. Bonnie Thank you, for setting this up. Thank you, Bonnie, Thank for you. setting this up. It was awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Nice to see everybody. Thank Bye. you so Bye. much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.